I V M. TFG Football is an IVM production, and you can also check out their other awesome shows like Geek Fruit with fellow and television geek stages Jishnu and Dinkar as they discuss the world of science fiction and nerd culture. You're listening to TFG Football. Hello, welcome, guys. A new episode of the TFG Football Podcast, and uh, well, a great weekend of footballing action on the field, but also seen a lot of uh, explosions in terms of. Coach is talking about the referee. This is not a new thing, uh, but let's keep the bad things, which is that a little later, a little later part of the show, as we start with something good uh, in terms of uh, footballing action. Now I have both the boys, Shivanjit and Kevin, joining us via phone call, and once again we're not in the studio, we're doing from our respective homes. Uh, the good part is that North East United and Delhi Dynamos, the bottom place teams. Uh, They had a good performance on the field when they were playing FC Goa and uh, Chennai, respectively. Now, North East uh, defeated FC Goa 2-1 at home, uh, while Delhi had a late equaliser to score against Chennai to hold them to a two-all draw. Now, Kevin and Chen both we take both these teams uh, together as a whole to talk about it. Kevin, I begin with you. Two bottom place teams playing against two. One of the top and formidable uh, teams, and they got a result. One got a win, the other took a draw. It's a good start to the new year for them, right? It is. It is. Uh, the first point that uh, we should understand over here is that uh, the table is shaken up. So it makes yeah. a difference when uh, your bottom place team starts to get points, or at least not draw points against uh, any any team. Now, when it's against the one of the top sides in in the league who've been Uh, able to score consistently and even uh, get in that last-minute uh, goals required. So this is a great right. confidence booster, and especially for Delhi Dynamo. I think the way they played, uh, you know, yes, the goal came in late. I think that yeah. just shows signs of positive improvement in the camp. The mood is set right. So that is yeah. all you need when you you've got a series of string of losses going against you, not even a draw. So it, it just ha- doesn't help in any way. Whatever uh, the, the coach's plan is, you know, uh, you know, looking at the table, it's just demotivating for the players. But yeah. this draw, especially, especially the late draw, is I think it, it, it's it's a way to you know, talk to yourself. Okay, this is uh, our way to come back. And uh, again, the side like Chennai, you know, obviously it, it does wonders for them. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, credit to the way uh, that the, there's some patience kept in camp. <coughs> uh, this is this is really good for uh, Delhi Dynamos. And uh, I, I think the combination what was played yesterday uh, is what needs to be played more often. At least a couple of games more. Maybe make one or two changes. Rather mm-hmm. making a wholesale change. Uh, Rather than making wholesale changes, so this is the right way to go. And for North East United, you know, we obviously know that they've been getting a couple of draws here and there, but the wins have been eluding them. Uh, so against FC Goa, ah, what else can you expect? Uh, yeah. uh, we were expecting another, uh, you know, barrage of goals, say three nil or four nil or five nil, and there uh, North East United, you know, steps up. And uh, says no, uh, this is not going to be happening for too long. Mm. And uh, we also want to get along uh, with, with the other teams. So slightly push uh, off the bottom of the table uh, for North East United. Uh, this is going to be a, long, a journey for them, uh, but it, it's a small step. Uh, even if you, mm. uh, it, it's a big win, but it's a small step uh, in the right direction. Right. And then just coming to you now, actually, go. We you know they've been uh, more. I think more than playing on the field, they've been traveling for more, more than yeah. that. Uh, you know, from whether it's after the match was, you know, for push to the third of January, <coughs> they're eighty k, and we know how when when they play, and they immediately travel to northeast, uh, to Guwahati, uh, particularly. And do you think that all of that traveling took a toll on them? Yeah, eventually it does. Uh, especially the way they played the uh, ATK match was not a uh, perfect condition. But of course, that's no longer an excuse because you had uh, two, three days, uh, and uh, you were playing uh, in a completely new venue against a new team, uh, and uh, it's it's not even uh, you know you're no longer that uh, frustrated and 
and and unrested uh, team when you're playing north east united mm-hmm. but uh, i thought i thought uh, they were unlucky in, in terms of uh, getting those goals because uh, they did create uh, a lot of chances in the second half but mm-hmm. they just kept missing uh, and uh, i think uh, that happens on a day or two Uh, especially when the players are uh, you know when fatigue is catching on with the players a little bit it can happen so i'm not very worried about fc goa i think uh, this kind of uh, you know faltering in forms will happen when you're playing back to back away games uh, in in yeah. quick succession uh, i think they're going to bounce back they have a 4 5 day gap now they're going to go back at home uh, yeah they they're going to bounce back and uh, and Yeah, let's not uh, count them out. Uh, they they have been through some yeah. uh, you know tough circumstances in the last couple of games. They've got 13 points from eight games. If they win the next game, they uh, they just suddenly become uh, a top four uh, place and you know a title contender again. So right. there's there's not much to worry about if they go at this point. Right. Well, uh, what on Delhi's performance, Rindi? Well, uh, Delhi. really did needed this uh, and not is united and delhi i mean even though uh, fc goa were uh, a little bit sloppy let's not take away from not is united's performance you could see it in the players eyes what it meant to them how much they tried uh, and so many great saves by tp uh, rainish as well uh, even nirmal right. chetri was putting in uh, you know, a 200% out there everybody just really wanted to win this Uh, same thing with uh, Delhi Dynamos. They were pushing hard and uh, uh, really going out there because they knew it was now or never. So getting a uh, away draw against Chennai FC is not a child's play, uh, no matter what kind of uh, circumstances you're playing in, uh, yeah. and uh, and who who Chennai FC are rotating does not matter. You are going out there playing, uh, you know, one of the. Uh, most ferocious teams uh, in the season i think uh, third most uh, scoring or fourth most scoring goal uh, goal scoring team so yeah it's a it's it's always a challenge especially when you are uh, you know coming off a five loss uh, streak and uh, you just convert it into a draw well, that's something to go about but both north east united and delhi dynamos though it does it already feel a little bit too late too little too late because One is on seven points after eight uh, matches. One is on four points after eight matches. Uh, as we know now, the the fourth position is uh, is on fourteen points. So one is a ten point gap. One is a seven point gap. You know, Kevin and Sudhir, I'll ask you both: Is this too much of a gap to uh, you know make up at this point? No, right now, you know, it, it's not even half the season over, so uh, it's too early to call that uh, things have already passed one's hand. And uh, you know, when, when you have top teams losing out or uh, you know, dropping points, uh, even even if it means uh, draws, it really means there is competition. Uh, there's no you no know, one-sided affair, or, or it's not a you no know, a two-way uh, two-horse race in that matter. So there there will be times when uh, bo- both uh, the teams at the top uh, will be playing each other, and that's when uh, <laughs> we'll expect more points to be dropped from uh, both teams, and it allows you know competition to just have that little edge, a little drama about it. So I I don't think it's uh, too little or too, too late for either of the teams, even if they mm-hmm. it means uh, get getting uh, some points at this. Okay. Moving on with other results that happened in I in ISL was Jamshedpur FC University actually also was held on to two all draw, and uh, on the other side there was Bengaluru who were back on the top of the points table with a one nil uh, victory against ATK, and uh, they bounced back at home with a win with a lone goal by Sunil Chetri. Now let's head on with I League for now, and uh, we saw a great match on Sunday uh, between Mohan Bagan and Anais Gaur. Mohan Bagan winning it two nil. Uh, when the other matches that we looked at were Neroka versus Indian Arrows, which Neroka won two one, was again a good game. Shillong and Chennai City were a tough match, and we called it even. Uh, Kevin called this like you know he said it was a difficult, you know, tough game. One which is you know trying to get a win, the other is trying to improve. So it was a goalless draw. 
for other entertaining match that was when Gokulam Kerala FC continued their struggle at home. They lost to the New York and job 1-0. Now, coming to the Bagan game, the reason we come back to this match, it was not just the on-field action, but also something interesting happened after the post-match press conference. Shiran, why don't you take, take us through that? Yeah, so uh, as you know, uh, Mohan Bagan won the game 2-0. A uh, frustrating day at the office for Aizol FC. Masi Saigani scored that own goal, which got things started. Uh, and, uh, and towards the end... Uh, of the match, uh, I think right after uh, Kroma was uh, coming off, uh, you, you remember he was limping off, right? And uh, and so what what I think the cameras did not show was that Kroma acted like you know he his foot was broken, he was completely just uh, you know devastated or whatever, and he needed two people to uh, you know escort him out of the pitch. He could not even like put his right foot on the ground at that moment it seemed like but the moment he just uh, you know the moment he steps off the pitch you know he, he he gets subbed off the moment he steps off the pitch suddenly magically his lip disappeared and and i was i was looking at him because i was super worried like is he is he going to miss a month or what, what's going to happen and the the moment he steps off he just normally walks away he leaves her like two and just doesn't even care. He normally walks away and uh, goes and gets an ice pack for himself. And the entire press box just started laughing their guts out because that that was such a beautiful performance uh, in terms of uh, acting from Chroma right there. So uh, yeah, and and Izan Martin Andre, I think uh, the assistant coach who had been uh, a bit angry about some of the referee decisions all along and. Uh, and both uh, uh, the assistant coach and the Aizal FC head coach seem to think that the Dika goal uh, that uh, made it 2-0 was actually an offside. So Izan Martin Andre just lost it. Uh, he just let the referee have it. He, there was a lot of yelling and the referee sent him off. Uh, okay, so uh, the assistant coach was sent off uh, for the last few minutes. Uh, Aizal FC head coach Paulo Menezes was asked about this in the press conference and he blasted the referee. Completely blasted the referee. So just listen to what he said. I, I, I want to say one thing. I want to say one thing. I told the referee, I, I am very blessed, very blessed. I, sometimes too much, too much. But I don't have a friend because when you speak the truth, when you are fair, when you ask the, the fairness to your players to play like fair play and be honest inside of the, the pitch. If you see, if you see a bad word from the referee, you need to complain. I always say to the fourth referee, look, you see this this fault against my team. I don't complain because I, I see it's fault against my team. I don't complain. But I need to complain when I see a bad decision. Not one, one, two, three, four, and big mistakes. Sorry that it's true. Sorry that it's true. I am Christian. You are Christian or, or uh, Muslim, I don't know. But we need to respect the, 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 the people and the job of the, the professional uh, players and the coaches or not. What say the Bible? The Bible, what say? Be fair. Sometimes can I, can I have a mistake, see? Okay, oh, me too. Maybe today was my, my mistake, for sure, because I am the coach. We lose, okay, my responsibility. But many times, many times, you know how much, how much penalties until now, until now, did nobody put, put one penalty to us. Four, four, it was clear. It's not about this match, but you need to be fair. We are a smart club, okay, but we, need, we deserve respect. I always say the same, always, always. I don't want to take advantage of the referees, never, never. I told the referee in the half time, if you put one penalty, to my team, if I if I win the, the game, I don't like. I prefer to lose the game. But you need to be fair. They don't need don't need help of the refs because they are so big. It's all about the refs. I don't like to talk about the refs, but it's enough. It's too much. But are you talking about today's match in particular? Or are you talking about 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 penalties and other match? And today. Today, I don't know. You remember the, the, the big kick against our, my, my goalkeeper outside of the box? I don't know. You, 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 
50 standard of football for sure. So you can you can see the second goal. It's not offside, maybe five meters. Uh, what, what I can say, I, I need to shut up. When I have reason with truth, I never shut up. Because it's not fair. Yeah, so he's completely like, uh, he got emotional a little bit, you know, he started talking about religion and everything, but, uh, I mean, this comes out of frustration, and uh, it, it's true, although the Dika goal was not an offside, I mean, you could see uh, in a replay, but we have the advantage of replay, uh, those guys did not have it uh, when, when they were protesting, uh, from their perspective, it may have seemed offside, but, uh, you know, who knows, uh, so... Yeah, it's an accumulated uh, frustration at the poor refereeing decisions that have been happening in I League and uh, and ISL as well. Like so many, yeah. uh, so many decisions I mean, have been over there. It's it's like if a coach has uh, to say something, the the next news is that they're suspended. I mean, they are they are being suspended for saying the right or pointing out the truth. That is so ridiculous. I mean, we know that at the moment actually Pune City coach Popo is under suspension. And the recent guy who was suspended was Kenyan actually coach John Gregory. I mean, all of these yeah, are policy Yeah, uh, it's like all the sad state of uh, Indian football at the moment. Just because, I mean, why don't you rectify your uh, refereeing decisions and get them some more training? Or if they're doing deliberately, then fact, I mean, you know, suspend them. Why? The no, I'll, I'll I'll tell you where the, where the problem lies at this moment is that usually what uh, 2014 to mm -hmm. 16 what happened was that ISL appointed this uh, independent uh, international referee agency which supplied right. referees for uh, ISL games. But yeah. now uh, two things ISL wanted to do one they wanted to cut cost so uh, and, and as well as uh, ISL is now uh, an AFC recognized tournament, right? Mm -hmm. So they uh, asked AIFF to provide referees, same as it does in I League, right? So uh, the the official uh, roster of referees from the federation officiates now both I League and ISL matches. But the problem that happens is that <clears throat> you know you have a system of referees earning experience and getting promoted to better and better matches. Like they they start out at academy games, then youth league games, uh, second division, local league. And when an, a referee has enough amount of like good performance and uh, experience, they are allowed to, uh, you know, uh, officiate at the top level. What's happening now is that I League and ISL are happening at the same time. So now you have like ten matches a week or something like that. <clears throat> more actually more than that. So you need a double amount of referees. You don't need to officiate ten teams matches. You need twenty teams matches. Suddenly the the requirement of referees has doubled, which has led to a lot less experienced referees being given a chance to officiate by the AIFF. This was not this was not seen coming. You know, the decision to do it parallelly was taken just a few months before, and you can't train new referees in just a few months. So you have less experienced referees out there. So mistakes are happening. This is a logistical error that Indian football yeah. is going through, and I hope this is the only time this is happening. Yeah, I mean, this logistical error is costing some some of the teams because at the end of the decision of the referee matters the most because his one decision can either ruin or you know, make a team's uh, day. Kevin, I'm bringing you here. It's an ongoing uh, issue. I mean, whether it is AIS is appointing referees or whether it's coming up from some international rescues, we've been seeing this in the inception of ISL in particular. And now slowly we also see an IE where coaches are renting on the frustration of the rescue. It's, it's a usual thing, but when it's a continuous process, then you doubt what's happening behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, the, 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 the point that Ranjit is making is you know, correct uh, about uh, the referee is not being available for so many games that are happening. It's almost like every day you have a match, and it might be at one end of uh, India at, at this day, and, and another day you have to have a referee present on the other side. So, along with the players and the coaching staff of, of the clubs and teams, you have referees also who, are, who have been you know, appointed uh, to officiate matches. So, that creates a problem where uh, your performance also has uh, it needs you know, monitoring. Now, I, I don't know if there is a committee that's monitoring the referee's performance, but that also needs to be looked into because uh, the complaints and, and the quality of refereeing has been you know, questionable over the years. 
and it's just we just not ISL. ISL is something that we you know seen uh, very evidently. But I League also has you know uh, some games yeah. which which have uh, because the referee decisions had to turn it on its head, and uh, it has led to uh, lots of consequences. So the problem right here, right here is not just logistical; it's also you know efficiency. Now, how efficient are the referees? You know, with their training, is it the right way to go ahead? That this needs to be some monitoring system that ha- has to be in place to check, you know, if this is according to the standards. And if there are some complaints, legitimate or not, it has to be looked into. There yeah. Too many occasions that are happening, and uh, you know, everybody's turning a blind eye, or everybody in in support of the the ISL referees or I League referees. But there also needs to be a consideration that you know, there are questions about their referring uh, uh, decisions. Is it legitimate? If, if not, what are you doing about it? So right now it's just too much protection for the referees. But uh, I, I think there will be a time that that somebody has to step, uh, so, you know, put their foot down and say, you know, yes, uh, this needs to improve. Either we get into quality training, or maybe you spread out the matches in a way that you know this training can be inculcated into the referees. So there are uh, there are some uh, you know refereeing uh, training centers or uh, centers of excellence are uh, springing up all over the country and and it will be wrong to suggest that IFF is not trying to improve the situation but then again uh, you can only train a referee to a certain extent some referees have that extra touch extra talent of getting things right of spotting things in that split second and uh, you know making the correct decisions. Some referees just don't have it, and the only way you find out is when you see a referee officiate a game, uh, you know, top level game, under pressure game, uh, enough times, and uh, that 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 only that's a trial and error process. And simply because uh, we have too many matches happening, and suddenly uh, our uh, you know referee pool is short, we are uh, in this situation. Hope this uh, you know works out. Hope uh, it gets resolved. But uh, yeah, as, as, the, as to the point that uh, Kevin made, that uh, is somebody evaluating this. I think the referees association does evaluate this, uh, the referees' performance and everything. But uh, it's it's an internal process. It's not brought to the light. It's done uh, very uh, you know secretively, confidential uh, process and everything. So yeah, it needs to be taken seriously now. Um, yeah, it, I I hope it's taken seriously. We we don't know from outside uh, what's happening, but I hope it's taken seriously. The other thing is that I think Paulo Menezes is is in uh, you know is in. There's a chance he might get some punishment for this outburst that you just heard. Uh, the match referee was at the back of the room. I didn't know this. Somebody else pointed this out out to me that the match referee was standing at the back of the press conference room and he was taking a video recording of the proceedings. Which is very unusual. He only did it for the Aizol FC press conference. He wasn't there when uh, the Mohan Bagan head coach came out, Shankarlal Chakravarti. He wasn't to be seen. It. I think he expected an outburst and he got it. So I, there, there may be something, uh, some action taken against uh, Paulo Menezes, just like it was taken against uh, 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 yeah, against John I Gregory. Yeah. I mean, it's just sad that uh, at times you see it is, if this is all deliberately done because they want to, you know, <laughs> uh, test the patient of the coach. I don't know what. Uh, no, 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 no. So, see, from the from the federations and the league's perspective, they have to have the coaches not uh, criticize the referees or criticize the I federation guess. or the league because that that's just the way it is. You know, disciplinary bodies yeah, have a strict. It's something like in, in India, no, it, they feel every, everything is like their puppets, so everything should work according to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the, the thing, the thing with that is that uh, you, th- that's where the imbalance comes from. That's where the struggle comes from. It's it's a competitive league. Every club will want one hundred ten percent out of this for themselves. They're not. They're in it for themselves. They're competing against the others. So of course they will want uh, the referees to be most careful with them. So yeah, the coaches will do this, and and there has to be. This is the natural state of being. Like there is a struggle between the clubs and the coaches because neither is perfect. The clubs, coach, uh, the, uh, the clubs, the coaches, the players, 
push the federation and the league to be better and the federation and the league push the clubs and coaches and players to be better this is this is the struggle that makes the competition happen and you see this uh, this uh, you know uh, huge wave of uh, protest that's coming up uh, from chennai nfc fans right against against the isl disciplinary committee for suspending their fan, their coach for telling the truth that's yeah, the that's, the fans uh, the yes that's the natural state of being there has to be you know the uh, you you just uh, for so long you just saw this that the the uh, uh, fans of isl teams just defended the league on 100% of the occasions that is not the natural state of being you're not supporting the league you're supporting your team and you are you are supposed to like push the league to be better so this is this is i think as times are going on we are seeing the more competitive edge of the league emerge that chennai nfc fans are demanding better pune city fans are demanding better bengaluru fc coach uh, i think has been uh, talking about uh, i league refereeing for the last two seasons <coughs> and, uh, and i mean ashley westwood was also talking about it before uh, roka also talked about it uh i think he's going to continue talking about it i think we're going to see this voice of dissent rise even further as federation starts to yeah. you know dole out suspension i mean after after bengaluru and the game and past in the little bit about it saying that you know this thing is still becoming a serious thing now <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's coming from everywhere and uh, hopefully there's some action taken against them as well and we see some better for bowling action and so now that was a long 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 first half of our show we slipped into a short break and on the other side uh, we'll be talking about the night high league matches or that in the other side shunya one shunya one shunya one shunya one a billion dollar acquisition Another copycat startup got formed. No, the tech world in India is surely moving double the speed of this voiceover. Tune in to Shunya One every Tuesday to catch us talking to the smartest people we know on the IBM Podcast website, app, or wherever you get your podcast from. Welcome back, guys. And uh, for the first half of a lot of uh, referee talk, let's finally talk about some action on the field. Uh, as today, we have two matches in I League. Uh, one is Shillong versus India Rose and the other is Chelsea Brothers versus East Bengal. Now, Kevin, I'm going to start with you because yes, Shillong is involved here. But <laughs> talking about Shillong, uh, it was a tough match against Chennai City and uh, though any of the goalers started, it was a great match to watch because there were chances created and both the keepers did a good job of coming with the defending. Uh, defense were good. Here, the victory, Shillong having a chance to bounce back with a win against India Rose or get a win here and they are chipping at home or is it like though even shillong as long as a young squad right so would it be like again a tough match against indian arrows who also have a young squad yeah, uh, firstly i just want to uh, talk something about the last game that shillong is on play right. against net city uh, i think it was a poor game uh, from okay. lejong uh, this is not the lejong side that uh, performed in the first two games of the i league this season it is it's totally different I don't know. There has been some change in the attitude. Uh, they've not been, you know, uh, the, the passing has not been free flowing as you would expect them. I mean, mm-hmm. there, there is ha- there is some restraint put uh, because you know uh, the wings are less, uh, not as active. The fullbacks are not even uh, moving up, you know, half the pitch. So where where we saw Lajong side, that was you know uh, fearless going into the air. Now it's more you know, conscious. a little bit cautiousness uh, to hold up hold back and not try to concede uh, it would be a pro- problem of you know uh, knowing all your opponents uh, so that that's what happened against chennai city and here against uh, indian arrows i i think they are very well aware that this uh, young side just like them is you know potentially good at the attack and maybe we see a similar game so when you start seeing a side you know completely showing different performance in two different games you know that there is something uh, you know being instructed or that the strategy that is put into the mind it shows on the field and the mm. attack has actually you know become such a way that it's not going to be scoring three goals they may just okay. score one goal but you know, all the time they have in the mind that we don't want to concede we don't want to concede any more goals so it leads to a bit of you know, you know a slightly boring uh, uh, game and it's just like chennai city uh, and it's long ago 
I think this might also result in the same little kind of boring uh, gameplay gameplay from Shri Lanka job. But uh, I wouldn't complain because you know that's what uh, long league gives you. It's not a knockout tournament where you want to win every game. You want to win every game. League is look at the opponent, look at the table, and decide how you want to go ahead with the game. So Indian arrows, obviously, you know this development side, they don't care about the result. For them, it's all about performance and it's all about improvement. And the way uh, uh, Mathos has been making changes, I'm really, you know, I, I'm looking forward to this another game by. Uh, uh, I've seen Ali K. Jadav do so well, but he's being subbed off at you know important times, little like 20 minutes before time. He brings on uh, a couple of strikers and makes changes to the formation, just to throw throw in that challenge to the opposition. And Shillong Lajong will be you know subject to that and in, in this game as well, uh, because. No, coming back from that uh, golden draw at home, obviously uh, we were expecting them to you know, bounce back with the win, but that wasn't the case. It, it could be a possibility that you know, the coach is looking at the opponent and you know, making the changes. So this game will be a kind of similar situation that uh, they were put to against Chennai City, but the Indian Arrows on the other side, they are a tactically you know, a sm smart team. They would want to get that one goal and then add up to that. No, not just sit back because we've not seen Indian arrows defend. All they, right. all they did is you know contain the uh, the attack. So this right. game is going to be all about attack for uh, for Indian arrows and again for Shillong region. It depends, you know, what kind of instructions are given. Are they going to be a little more cautious or are they going to be the free flowing Lajong from the first two games of the ice? Hmm, right. Now, what do you think? Is do you think it's going to be a tough? Back in between the two young squads, or do you think Shillong will bounce back with a win at home? Yeah, first of all, I want to disagree with uh, uh, with uh, what Kevin said uh, that Indian arrows don't care about the results. I think they care about it very much. I think Matos is plotting for a top four finish because everybody, uh, you know, there's a this is exclusive interview podcast uh, uh, that's going to be up with uh, Chennai City owner Rohit Ramesh. And he also, I asked him, like, what's the target for the season? He said top four. Why? Because everybody wants to play in, this, play in the Super Cup. And I think, I think Matos is, is just, you know, I think he's salivating at the prospect of playing against ISL teams. And to do that, he needs to finish at the top four so that he can make it into the Super Cup. So, uh, yeah, Indian Arrows do care about the results. They will want to uh, win and uh, try to you know, go some distance, especially because... Lajong seem to have run into a bit of lack of form over the last three games. Uh, haven't won any of them. Same record as Arrows, by the way. Uh, two losses, one draw in the last three games. So, yeah, both teams are having a little bit of trouble. I agree with Kevin in the sense that uh, this is not going to be an explosive game. Uh, both will try a game of containment. Lajong do hold the advantage uh, in a home game and everything else. But we have seen uh, you know, Indian Arrows sort of be a little bit better in terms of attack. Ten goals so far uh, in, in eight games. Uh, Lajong have scored only six. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just kind of seem to think this this might end up being a 1-1 one -one draw or something like that. But yeah, it, it's not going to be it's not going to be the most explosive game you see today. Okay, then. Uh, let's look uh, look forward to that. And the other match we have to look forward to is Churchill Brothers versus East Bengal. It's really the beginning to hear Churchill, Churchill kind of showing up with some fight, but again, uh, they somehow tend to lose that. Now, East Bengal are on a formidable uh, form. They also got a win in their last uh, encounter against Indian Arrows. What do you mm -hmm. think this, uh, how do you think this match is going to turn out? Again, for East Bengal or a fight from Churchill? <sighs> Just I, I don't know what Churchill Brothers are doing. It seems like uh, you know uh, the, the, I have said this before and people have hated me for it. But Churchill Brothers just seems to be around as a favor to AIFF because they need team, ten teams. Last league, uh, last season they seem to be trying a little bit with uh, some smart recruitment. But ever since Derek Pereira went away, uh, this this is this team is in tatters. Uh, I don't know what they will do. They're the best. The, uh, I won't say the best, but the league leaders are playing against the bottom table team who have lost all their matches so far. Like, how do you even put this on a scale? Like, the scale is going to break. One guy has won five out of uh, eight matches. 
the other guy has lost five out of five matches. Oh, this is uh, and 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 you you imagine this this defense uh, of Churchill Brothers, which has conceded 13 goals so far, going up against the uh, East Bengal attack. And East Bengal attack is slowly getting itself uh, sorted more and more. Katsumi Yusa is becoming more creative. Uh, you have uh, Amna over there doing so well. Uh, you you're gonna have uh, basically basically East Bengal are improving. Churchill Brothers, I don't even know what they're doing when they're not playing. So there just doesn't seem to be uh, any kind of pushback, at least from the way the club management has been working with this team. Uh, that uh, I guess is if I I have no no hope for Churchill Brothers. Uh, if if they prove me wrong, I'll be the happiest man because because with Mohan Bagan winning the winning the last match, uh, if if East Bengal lose the game, that will potentially put them neck to neck ahead of the derby, and that that's the kind of derby I want to see. That when when you're going into the derby, both teams are neck to neck in the points table, and it's a potential title race, six pointer game. That makes the derby more interesting. So I want mm-hmm. Churchill Brothers to do something here, prove me wrong, but. I just don't see it. Okay, well, uh, Kevin, what do you have to say about this match? Uh, 2018 uh, <laughs> uh, may bring some uh, some success to Churchill Brothers, and if it has to be, it has to be starting from this game. If not, okay. you know, uh, even if it is a miracle, it has to be against the top side. Uh, otherwise, I don't see them, um, you know, even scoring goals. This is the yeah, way they they approach the game. It's just sad. It's just do you feel mm-hmm. pity for them? Because they're just not able to get the court, the attacks coordinated. Neither their defense is in good shape. So what mm. what do they do? And uh, against a side like East Bengal, who just you know uh, the scoring and the will, they might just crush them badly. You know. Uh, but mm. I'm hoping that you know some way uh, uh, the coach can use use the, the break that they had, and uh, this New Year can you know bring in that that kick in of a good comeback. And it has to be maintained, and but if not started today, it's already going to be too late. Hmm. Well, uh, interesting times ahead. Hopefully, they still have some fight to show us uh, this time around against the big clubs like they showed us against. They like they showed us the last season, but we know how they managed to do that. But let's hope for a good game in both these matches that we have tonight in our league. Now that brings us to the end of the show. Uh, if you go long, you know, hopefully you enjoyed it and you should put away your Monday blues, that's right, and uh, helps you to get some more, uh, you know, digging to what's happening in, in football. Now, that's all, folks. Uh, if you did like it, then do show us that you did. Uh, like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell icon, so you get a new episode. You can also let us know about your uh, thoughts, what you have to say about these matches, the referee issue, or Anyone you want to talk about Indian football in the comment section below or talk to you directly on Twitter. Thank you, Boza, Boza, and Mr. Kevin, Sidney, 1994. Follow the TSG Football Twitter handle, TSG Football, and also follow up on our website, thefangirls.com, for everything you want to know or read about these stories. Have a great day, folks, and join and come back tomorrow. was Tantrik Steve from Hansraj College, Delhi, performing at IIT Bombay's Mood Indigo. Just like them, there's a lot of new talent and art coming out of colleges all across India. But unfortunately, most of this goes completely unnoticed or ignored. To fix this, we started ATKT.in. Hi, I'm Ankur. I'm a musician and a rapper. And I found that one of the best things about being an artist myself is finding new talent. Through ATKT.in, Tanya, my colleague who's a dancer, and our whole team really is putting all of our efforts into discovering and promoting all the coolest talent that's coming out of colleges all across India. And this goes up on our website, our social media, TV, radio, and now of course, this podcast with IVM. Make sure you go to our website, support the talent with your likes, your shares, your comments, all of that really matters. Go ahead, check it out. ATKT.it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction and chaos taking place all around us. 
But don't you worry, food and drinks will be served shortly, and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.